Right. Hi, everybody. I think we're maybe live now. Uh, maybe, I hope you can see me. It's all a bit strange being backstage. Um, but welcome back to um, KCD UK conference. Uh, I'm here with Danny. Um, we're our co host for the afternoon. Um, Danny, I believe we possibly have, do we have messages from, from sponsors or anything we need to um, do? I don't think so. Okay, we'll come back to those later. <laughs> so I just throw with Daddy off the, <laughs> off the bus there. <laughs> um, okay, um, so what we do have for you this afternoon, um, coming up in a second, we're going to be talking to our charity partner. Um, after that, we have a talk on EBPF from our one of our co-organizers, um, Josh Mickelson. Um, then we have seamless scale of Kubernetes nodes from Marco. Um, yeah, and then some, some closing stuff after that. There is um, track two. You can find a link to that, I hope, on YouTube. Um, but the first thing we have is our charity partner. Um, and we have Phil Sturgeon from Protect Earth talking. So um, just before we go to that, I do want to say I am one of the best things about this conference, I think, is that we do have charity partners. Um, that mean quite a lot to us, and we're trying to you know, raise as much money for them as we can. Um, and I think the, the, both of them are very relevant to, to what we're doing in Cloud Native. So um, yeah, please take it away, Phil. Great. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Um, yeah, thanks for your support with this awesome charity. Um, so if I can share my screen. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, I just put together a few slides to show what we're up to at Protect Earth. So a uh, little about us. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, the, the deforestation in the world every year is between 10 and 15 million hectares. Um, a hectare is like a Olympic, um, like a running track. So it's quite big. Um, uh, it's also the size of the UK every two years, just gone forest cover, uh, no more. So um, the UK has just 13% tree cover, which is way, way below the European average, which is like 37%. So there's not much, um, there's just not much around. And over the last year or two, I've, I've kind of started feeling like things aren't okay. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. We all want to do something. Um, so I was trying to figure out what could be done. Um, Project Drawdown suggests that uh, temperate forest restoration uh, could be about 27, 28, um, uh, was it gigatons of CO2 sequestered, uh, which is actually twice the potential impact of electric cars, uh, which are often hailed as the one and only savior of the world. So. Uh, put together a, a crack squad. Um, this is us working on our first project, planting 100 trees just to, just to get things started. Um, there's, there's Ed with his hook slasher, uh, and there's Andy planting some trees. Um, and we partnered up with Ecology, who you might have heard of. Uh, they're like a monthly subscription service to um, basically do good around the world, and whether that's funding um, efficient cook stoves in Eritrea or biodigesters in um, Vietnam, they, they you know, spread your monthly subscription around the world. Uh, and, and, you know, do good things with it. And one of those things is, um, is us. So as a charity, we work, we do a few things. We work with uh, landowners on existing, um, that own their land. Um, and we basically help them reforest that land or, or chunks of it for free. Um, there's a bunch of different grants around that are really complicated to understand. And a lot of the time people want to reforest chunks of their farm or, or you know, bits of their estate if they've got a huge garden. Um, they just don't necessarily know how. And often the financial incentives are, well, we'll pay you back, but that's it. Um, or sometimes you only get like a 75% discount. So a lot of the time landowners are being expected to give up huge chunks of their land for absolutely nothing in return or at cost. Um, so we help fix that a bit, help them work out all the grants. Um, and we'll you know, help with maintenance and thinning and watering or work with local climate action groups to, to get that done so that we can reduce travel miles. Um, there's loads of benefits for farmers. I won't go through them all, but it like improves um, uh, having a bunch of trees next to a field where there's crops will reduce wind damage, soil erosion, um, improve water and, and reduce the need for fertilizers. There's a bunch of benefits. Um, Specifically, shelter belts are fantastic at this. Um, they can run along the edge like a big hedgerow, but there's often no government grants for these because they're too wide to be considered a hedgerow and too narrow to be considered a woodland. Um, so we can uh, help fund these shelter belts that otherwise wouldn't get done um, and improve um, yeah, soil erosion, wind erosion. Uh, if you have cows in the field, 
it will actually reduce how much they shiver, uh, which means you don't have to feed them as much, which means that's better for the environment anyway. Um, but it also makes them happier. So if you do eat meat, then it apparently tastes better. <laughs> so there's a bunch of different benefits. Um, agroforestry in general, we can do dot planting, cluster planting, you know, putting them in a field. Um, and so you can continue to use that field uh, or, or alley cropping, which is where you have um, rows of crops running through the field that you can also harvest. So you can get nuts and pears and apples um, without giving up too much land. We also do woodland creation. So uh, here we are planting some of the 1,500 trees up near Middlesbrough. Um, on the right, there's gonna be a nice new lake and it meets a river at the back. Uh, this was a really fun project. We also work with, um, uh, this was a fishing, uh, a fishing club who have permission to fish the edge of this riverbank and it's slowly being eroded because all the trees have been removed and there's nothing there to hold the soil together. So we planted a whole bunch of trees, about 500 trees on this stretch of bank to try and keep the soil together. Uh, we get volunteers of all ages. <laughs> this is the youngest one so far. Uh, I'm not sure how many they planted, but they're very cute. And we use local resources when we can. Um, so here we are using um, horse manure for mulch for the trees. Um, not my favorite of jobs, but it's good for the environment. Uh, we plant trees uh, all through winter. Um, we planted 500 here in, in Hlandrid Nodwells uh, in Wales. Um, and they are coming along nicely. They've already sprouted a lot. There's a bunch of oak, aspen, field maple, all sorts. And right now we're working on um, uh, buying some land. So uh, yeah, we need help doing that. And I'll, I'll go real fast on this stuff. We make sure that ecologists are in charge. So we're not planting in the stupid places like Nestle have done and wrecking wildflower meadows. Um, we don't want to take agricultural land out of rotation. Uh, we make sure it's appropriate to plant and we try and use good guards, not plastic, which just gets eaten anyway. So, um, sorry, this is a bit more than I meant to talk about, but we use cardboard guards when possible. We've even got hemp mulch mats that biodegrade. So, um, we've made a bit of software to help with all of this. We're a few of us are techies by heart. We've got a big old, uh, database of all of the trees that we planted and take photographs of them all, store all the locations. And we use an iPhone app to do that. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we've planted 5,400 trees last season and we're looking to plant 100,000 trees this season. Um, and if you can help us do that, um, we really appreciate it. Uh, this conference is, is helping us out. And if any of you would also like to donate, just head over to protect.earth um, and give me a shout on Twitter or email me if you want to talk about anything. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. That was great. Um... I think we have two minutes before our next talk. Um, yeah, uh, Danny, do, I think we have some messages this time. Yeah, so in, in, just in this time, we just want to reiterate that we're grateful to our sponsors for the conference. So uh, Sneak, Control Plane, Jetstack, Sysdig, and Storage OS. Um, and of course, Tramshed Tech, who's our, our te technology uh, sponsor. And also to our workshop sponsors, Suzy Control Plane, Solo, and Container Solutions. And to our watch party uh, sponsors, which I'm, I'm at the Manchester the Watch Party right now, um, sponsored by Softiron. So thank you very much to our uh, sponsors for uh, providing financial support for the conference. 